So is cloud seeding a gimmick? Or is it a workable solution to tackle pollution? I'm joined by two very special guests. Professor Manindra Agarwal, Director IIT Kanpur. Appreciate your joining us. Remember, IIT Kanpur is the one driving this uh, exercise in partnership with the Delhi government. And Zeri Nosho, Director India Office at the Institute of Governance and Sustainable Development. Professor Agarwal, tell us if I were to ask you that straight question. Do you really believe that cloud seeding can work? Or is it dependent on various other variables? Well, cloud seeding by very nature depends on uh, natural factors, which include uh, presence of clouds, also includes presence of reasonable amount of moisture in the clouds. So given these two preconditions, it can work. It has worked in the past. So there is no reason to believe that it won't work. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that yesterday's experiments didn't work only because there wasn't sufficient moisture? Is that the only reason? Because the opposition is already raising questions and this is the political question, of course, Professor Agarwal, that a lot of money has been spent. Uh, the initial five cloud seeding trials are at a cost of about three crores, but that the results are uncertain. How would you respond to those? Look, I don't want to get into the political slugfest here. I approach this, our team's approach is uh, quite scientific. Uh, just with any scientific experiment, there is always an associated probability of failure. Uh, we are not in a domain of complete certainty here. There are many factors which do influence the uh, cloud seeding efforts. However, uh, if you look at the yesterday's uh, experiments that we did, uh, one may say that because it did not rain, so there is a failure, but I don't think so. Uh, if you see the moisture level, which was below 15% yesterday, uh, we had uh, our mm -hmm. instrumentation on the ground, which collected data before the seeding and after the seeding from multiple locations. And we got very interesting data, which uh, is going to help us in future efforts when we do a large scale seeding. Uh, for example, what we found was that uh, PM 2.5 and PM 10 levels uh, did come down between five to 15% in the areas where seeding was done. So that's a very interesting point that even at very low moisture level, with the amount of seeding material that we used, there mm -hmm. was an impact. And this correlation is key to develop a proper understanding of how much seeding needs to be done and when it needs to be done in order to make a big impact. Let me take what you've just said to uh, Zerin Osho, because uh, uh, Zerin, uh, the fact is that there are, I, I, speaking to environmentalists, they seem very skeptical of, uh, of cloud seeding. Is that skepticism justified? Where is that skepticism coming from? Here is IIT Kanpur attempting to partner and do something perhaps beneficial. Why the skepticism from day one that I hear from environmental activists? Thank you, Rajdeep, for having me this evening. Um, I, th I think I agree with Professor Agarwal. I think this uh, there is a political, you know, slugfest here. And, uh, you know, one should remember that when the AAP government was here in power in Delhi in 2023, they were the first ones to announce cloud seeding as a solution, a potential solution. Uh, even back then, might I add, the conditions, the climatic conditions were not good enough for us to actually seed the clouds. It's a it's an aerosol injection that you put into clouds. And now in 2025, we are seeing the BJP government saying, you know what, if AAP did not do it, we will do it. It's a political theater. Now the question begs, and going back to the point that you were making earlier about environmentalists, and uh, quite frankly, anybody who has studied science would be skeptical about this. And as Professor Agarwal did point out, there are lots of uncertainties when you do climate injections of uh, aerosols in the clouds for precipitation. Um, for example, 
clouds that are above the altitude of anywhere between five to eight kilometers cannot be injected with the the you know the aircrafts that we currently have. Secondly, there needs to be cloud present to be seeded. Thirdly, in 2024, the union ministry went to the parliament saying that cloud seeding would be essentially an emergency response to the air pollution crisis in Delhi, but cannot be a feasible solution. And one of the, the points made by the union ministry to the parliament during that submission was that we already have clouds and rain coming from Western disturbances, which bring in natural rain. So what is the point of seeding the clouds, especially when the total bill to the taxpayer in Delhi is about 30 crores? So the question then begs, are we interested in looking at spending 30 crores for an entire winter season, which is essentially three months, um, for Delhi? Or are there better solutions available which perhaps look at changes in policy, look at perhaps uh, developing an air shed? and tightening the noose on where the... But those are, but, but those are very long-term solutions. No, not, not, the not changes in, But the changes in policy are long-term solutions. Is this a short-term fix? The government seems to be wanting a short-term fix. Some say it's headline-grabbing if they are critics. Others say, at least let's try something. Is it a, 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 why should the government be uh, targeted for trying or experimenting something? This cannot be a short-term fix because this is not new technology. This has been around since 1950s. Let's talk about the history of cloud seeding. The government of India with IITM was the first in uh, attempting to do cloud seeding on the rain shadow areas of the Western Ghats. It did not work there for agriculture and we are going to tout this as a short-term solution in Delhi. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So you're saying the real solution is policy changes, only that will really solve Delhi's problem. And therefore, to look at cloud seeding as some kind of a panacea is simply not really the answer to the environmental crisis. Am I correct? Absolutely. You're trying to solve for the symptoms rather than solving for the underlying disease. So I can take a paracetamol to control my fever. But if my disease is something else, which is a lot more serious, then all I'm doing is to figure out how to get the temperature in control. So if you want to actually solve for Delhi's air pollution, and we know the source apportionment comes in coming from transport sector, and the transport sector cannot be dealt with till the time policies are put in place. And we, I must mention that the BJP government did try to take an ambitious step forward and then retracted. That is secondary. But those difficult decisions have to be taken, have to be taken by the government. So trying to seed the clouds, you know, since 1950s and here we are in okay. 2025, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Hello. Okay, let me leave it there. I appreciate both of you joining us and giving us contrasting perspectives. But thank you very much for joining me on my other talking point tonight.